Hi everyone, Colin here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the Thinkific integration for Groundhog that allow you to connect your Thinkific school into WordPress directly. I'm going to assume you already have Groundhog installed and you've downloaded and installed the Thinkific integration from our site. To get started, your plugins are gonna look similar to this. And as you can see, I have Groundhog and the Groundhog Thinkific integration downloaded, installed, and activated. The first step we're going to do is to activate our license. So to do that, I'm going to Groundhog and choose settings. Once the settings has loaded on the right hand side here, I'll choose a Thinkific tab. Uh, you could ignore all the settings at the very top for now. The setting we're going to be interested in is a license key. I'm going to copy and paste in my license key and click save changes. It's very important if you make change on this page to always click save changes. So if you change your license key or you activate or deactivate a license, always click save changes. Once that's done, I'm going to click activate license. And as you can see, the license has been successfully activated. The next few steps are going to be within Thinkific itself. So at this point, I recommend you open a new tab, go to your Thinkific school and log in to your instructor's dashboard and we'll pick it up there. Okay, so I've logged into Thinkific and I've opened my instructor's dashboard. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to click settings on the left hand side then I'll choose code and analytics, and then I'll click the word webhooks. This will open a page similar to this. There's two settings we're going to take initially. That is the API key and the subdomain. So first of all, I'm going to double click the API key and I'm going to copy and paste it. And I'm going to come back into my WordPress site, into the Thinkific settings of Groundhog and paste my API key into the correct box. Be sure you don't paste it into the license key. Your API key goes in the top here. The next uh, setting we need to get is the Thinkific subdomain. If I come back into the settings, you'll see my subdomain here. Bear in mind, this is the subdomain that was issued to you by Thinkific uh, when you first opened your school. So if you're using a custom domain, for example, say learn.example.com, that is not the subdomain you'll be using here. You must use a subdomain that's listed here in your instructor's dashboard. So my particular school is run Hybris. Uh, I can't copy and paste this directly, so I'm going to type it. So coming back into my settings, I'm going to type in run Hybris. And while I'm here, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the settings. The first one is to verify webhooks, and I recommend you enable this setting. This setting allows you to verify that any notification coming into your site is genuinely from Thinkific and uh, prevents anything fraudulent from occurring. I recommend you, you enable this setting. The next one is to tag users by course name. This is optional. What happens here is when a user is enrolled in a course, we can automatically tag them in Groundhog based on the course name. This is entirely optional up, and it's up to you. It's based on your funnels. It's an automatic process that occurs in the background. So if you have multiple courses and you want to automatically tag your users by the course name, this is a great option to enable. So now that we have all these settings set up, let's go ahead and click save changes, allow the page to refresh and just double check that your settings are as you wish. We're now going to set up some webhooks in Thinkific and to do that, I'm going to come back to my instructor's dashboard and I'm going to click webhooks. Okay, so once the webhook page loads, you'll notice here that I've set up all my webhooks ahead of time, of which there's a total of six. If you're following along, now would be a good time to pause the video and take a look on the left-hand side as to what the webhooks are. You'll need to enable a webhook for each action you wish to track and currently with the extension, there is six. Now let's learn how to add a new webhook. To do that, we're going to click new webhook and we've choice between model and topic. So for example, if I want to track user signups, it's going to be user and the topic is going to be sign up. You're now asked for a URL. This URL is available in the documentation and is unique to your site. If you want to get that URL directly, a really quick way to do it is to come into a funnel builder. So I've opened a funnel builder here in Groundhog. I'm going to choose add step. And you can choose any benchmark you wish from Thinkific. All the URLs are the same. So once you know one URL, you know them all. Let's choose the user sign up. I'm going to copy and paste this URL here. So this is the webhook URL. You'll notice it's unique to my site, which is a development site. Coming back into webhooks, I'm going to paste that URL into the box. We'll get a tick saying it looks good. And we'll choose save. As you can see, that webhook is now available to us. And you'll need to repeat this process for all the actions we wish to track. So for example, user sign up, order created, user sign in, enrollment trial, progress and completed. Once you've completed that, let's go and develop a few funnels in Groundhog. So now would be a good time again to pause the video, review what webhooks I've set up here, set them up on your end, and then let's get started by building some funnels for Thinkific in Groundhog. Okay, so as a brief recap before we start building any funnels, I'm going to assume you've Groundhog installed, 
you have the Groundhog Thinkific extension fully installed, activated, and its license key entered. And you've also gone to your instructions dashboard and set up your webhooks. If you haven't done any of those things, now would be a very good time to go back and do them uh, because you will not be able to build funnels in Groundhog without those steps being completed. Once again, I'd like to reiterate, you must set up a webhook in Thinkific for each benchmark you wish to track. If you don't have the webhook available in Thinkific or set up, your benchmark in your funnel will not work. The first funnel I'm going to set up is one for a user sign-in. So clicking add step, I'm going to choose benchmarks and I'm going to look at the user sign-in. I have a few options here. So for example, if anyone signs in or only when a particular student or a student signs in, I'm going to choose it for when students sign in because I don't want to tag myself or any of my instructors uh, when they sign in. I'm also going to add in a step and choose an action and I'm going to apply a tag and let's just call it student sign in. So based on that tag, for example, you could set up another funnel that if a user signs in but has not purchased a course, you could perhaps nurture them using that tag. So that's a really quick funnel. Click update and activate and then you can use this as you wish. Let's go ahead and delete this funnel and let's set up a new one. And in this particular one, I'm going to add an action. Uh, sorry, no, I'm going to add a benchmark and that is going to be when a tag is applied. So let's call it a paid course. So let's assume this tag is applied perhaps by a third party car, perhaps it's applied by WooCommerce and that means a user has bought a paid course. What I'm now going to do is I'm actually going to enroll them in Thinkific and to do that, I'm going to add a step. And the first action I'm going to do is create a user. So uh, we have a couple of options here. We can set the user password. I generally recommend you do not set the user password. This allows them, the user, to set their own password to get a link from Thinkific. And also there's the option of sending or not sending the Thinkific welcome email. I'm going to disable it in this particular instance and click update. So now that we've created the user, let's add another step. And this step is going to be to create an enrollment. So we're going to add this user to a course. To do this, uh, there's a couple of options you need to fill out. So uh, there's the course ID, the days to enrollment and days to expiry. I'm going to come back to course ID in a moment, but the days to enrollment is how long from today that the user becomes enrolled. If you add zero, this means that today or instantly that user will be enrolled. If you added say seven, that means a week from when this uh, action is run, the user will become enrolled. So we're gonna have the user enrolled immediately because for example, let's say a WooCommerce cart has just been completed, the user is paid, we wanna get them into our content as soon as possible. The next option is days to expiry. Uh, if I entered 365, that'd be 365 days. So now the user would lose access. If you're running a subscription service, I generally say to leave this blank so there's no expiry. And what you'd do then is you'd set up another funnel to remove the user from a course if their subscription failed or if they canceled. Coming back to the top, you have the option of course IDs. And the way Thinkific works is every course you create has a unique ID that includes bundles. So for example, if you're selling bundles, you're going to pass in the course IDs for the courses within that bundle. You do not pass in the bundle ID. So just to reiterate again, let's imagine you have three courses and you want to create an enrollment in those three courses. You'll need to enter three course IDs. To find that course ID, we're going to have to go back into our Thinkific school and briefly look at a URL. So let's go there now. Okay, so I've come back into my Thinkific instructor dashboard. I've clicked manage learning content and I've clicked courses. As you can see, I have two courses here. And if I want to enroll the user in both these courses, I'm going to need to get the course ID of both. To find a course ID, what you can do is click the course itself. This will open and then within the URL, you can see the course ID. So in this particular example, the course ID here is 175131. If I then close here with the X, and I move back to my courses and click the next course. Once again, if I look at the URL, we can see that the course ID here is 193173. So if I copy that course ID and come back into my funnel, if I paste that course ID in, here, in there, what's gonna happen is when this action is triggered, it's going to enroll the user in that course. And if say I had another course where the course ID was one, two, three, four, five, it would enroll them in that course. And all you're gonna do here is add in the course IDs that you want the user to be enrolled in. So that's a very quick overview of the funnels that are possible with Thinkific within Groundhog. Of course, the opportunities are boundless. Groundhog is incredibly extensible and you can play and mix and match as much as you wish with other extensions that are available from Groundhog themselves. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me directly. You're welcome to open a sport ticket or read our documentation. So once again, a sincere thank you for watching.